Let's go. Let's go. Time Welcome for back. action. Time for action. <laughs> for action, because we are going to talk about Doom Eternal. Mm -hmm. One of the best games uh, of the year, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, so far. Uh, it's have brought me one of the best experiences uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this year, in this season of games. Um, we are so happy to welcome here two of the people that made that amazing game possible. It's a classic. It's on a its classic, own. and it's a formula that is so well made that it has been just improving the same formula over and over the years. Mm -hmm. So we have Hugo Martin. Hugo Martin, who is the game director, not not the creative director no, that, no. that, that it shows there. Is a game director. Got a mistake here. So <laughs> and the executive producer, uh, who is Marty Stratton as well. And to speak with them at, about this amazing and very intense game, we have one of the persons that knows more about it. That is Matt Castle. Matt Castle. So from this is Rock Paper be so Shotgun. Rock Paper Shotgun, one of the media outlets reference in the industry. So we are here for a really interesting conversation. Yes, uh, we want to say we're going to say hi to all of them. Uh, uh, to uh, Martin and Marty, I mean Hugo and Marty in 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 Eat Software in Texas. Hello, guys. As well, hello. Nice to see Hi. you. Hello, Hugo. Nice to see you again. It's been a while since you visited Barcelona yes. for the last time. It was great having you, and it's also great having you virtually uh, this time. So now we see Matt as well. Matt, nice to see you hello. as well. And we hope to learn a, a lot about how this this you know both Marty and Hugo and the amazing team of its software created this masterpiece. Could you help us through the story? Let's do it. Let's go. Uh, so I'm very excited to be hosting this chat with Marty Stratton and Hugo Martin of id Software. Uh, Marty Stratton is the executive producer on Doom Eternal and the current studio director. Hugo Martin joined id Software in 2013, working as a creative director on the 2016 Doom reboot and game director on Doom Eternal. Uh, this was originally described to me as a fireside chat, and I do actually have a fireplace in my eye line, so it's kind of <laughs> true. Um, and we are talking about the creative path to Doom Eternal. Now, Doom Eternal released in March this year and is notable for two reasons. Not only did it receive critical acclaim, but it had what is arguably the greatest mission objective of all time, shoot a hole in Mars. Uh, so I, I had uh, I'd originally planned to call this conversation to Helen back the making of Doom Eternal, uh, but I realised that maybe paints development in a negative light. So I guess a good place to start is to ask very broadly: Was this development cycle hellish or heavenly? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I would say any any development cycle that's that's worth anything is probably somewhere in between because if you're if it's heavenly, then I, you know you're maybe not pushing yourself hard enough to 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 really do something special. Um, uh, certainly not hellish. You know, coming out of Doom 2016, uh, we we had really by and large the entire team back uh, had had um, you know added some people to the team, but but largely our our leads were you know were back, or it was people kind of coming up into leadership positions um, that had, that had worked on Doom uh, Doom 2016. Um, so we really had a great, just unbelievable foundation. We had a lot of confidence in what we were doing. Um, uh, you know, a lot of confidence in, in, you know, fans' response to Doom 2016. And I think overall, we, we really went at Doom Eternal with a level of ambition um, and excitement that, uh, that, that allowed us to do something that was, that was twice as big in, in every way and, and more complex and, and just a, a much greater experience for, for fans. So... Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we certainly had challenges throughout, you know, the game was, was delayed a little bit, um, at the end of, uh, at the end of last year, Bethesda gave us a chance to come back and, 
you know, and, and really, you know, polish it and, and, uh, and do everything that we wanted to do. Um, and, and, but, but, you know, by and large, it was, it was just fantastic. The team is, the team is just amazing. It is a great foundation from 2016. And, and we really got to, to, you know, to spread our wings with Doom Eternal. Um, so, uh, you come into a sequel with a lot of things established from Doom 2016, and I'm I'm quite interested in in the general process of sequel creation. Like, what what's actually like the first decision that gets made on a project like this? Uh, I mean, I guess the first decision is to do a sequel. <laughs> you know, to, right. to to basically say like it's 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 strong enough. I mean, you know, there's a lot that goes into that because it's. Uh, you know, you, you gotta you gotta feel comfortable and confident with with what the with what the game is doing, how fans are reacting to it. Um, at, you know, at at ID, uh, the team really really quickly starts to evaluate you know uh, player behaviors and and uh, you know I think I think it's one of the things Hugo Hugo does extremely well is just get out there and really understand um, how players are playing, play with them. A lot a lot of the a lot of the team does that, um, but uh, but but you know, watching, we're, we're in a, you know, over the last five, 10 years, it's been super interesting because you can watch people in their, you know, in their natural habitat playing, playing your game. Um, you know, they stream it for you, uh, constantly yeah. on, on platforms like Twitch, you can watch full playthroughs on YouTube. So you really actually have like the ultimate window into player behavior constantly. Um, and uh, and can monitor that and, and make changes. So I think the first thing was just to to kind of really understand what people liked about 2016. You know what you know what things that we thought they were doing that maybe weren't uh, you know weren't weren't keeping them engaged in 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 the game uh, as long as we wanted, or or the things they were doing that actually uh, kept them engaged, kept certain players engaged, but other players missed. I think I think starting to identify some of those things. Um, and, you know, and then, and then certainly, you know, getting the, uh, the, the creative seeds started with, uh, you know, our concept team and our designers, um, you know, it all, it all kind of starts, uh, starts at the same time, but, but I think that evaluation of, of how can, how can the game be better? How can it be bigger? How can it be better? Um, because you don't want to just make the same thing, um, mm -hmm. over that, that was, I think one of the things it wasn't just, I guess, you know, first decision is do we just do more or do we do better and bigger? And I think that, that certainly was a, was, was right at the very beginning. It wasn't like, let's just do more. Um, it's, it's really, you know, let's, let's do something much, uh, you know, let's do something different and, and bolder and, and continue to push forward uh, the, 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 the brand. Mm. What were like the, the biggest learnings from Doom 2016? What, what did you identify as maybe areas you needed to improve in Doom Eternal? Um, just from a gameplay people. perspective, probably. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, just from a gameplay perspective, probably, uh, I mean, a lot of things, but uh, pretty much that the, the overall design of Doom 2016 wasn't as airtight as we'd like. I mean, uh, we think that we caught with well, the majority of the people had a really good experience and they enjoyed it. Uh, but many reviewers and fans, I think, quietly slipped through the cracks. Um, I think Doom is such a popular game uh, that uh, maybe they were even quiet about about that that happened to them. You know, like they it was it was kind of one of those things where I don't know that people wanted to openly admit that they didn't experience the incredible rush of Doom 2016 that they quiet. You see them on Reddit. They were always like you'd have a thread about Doom 2016 late to the party and not all of them were gushing, you know, like there was actually a lot of people who were kind of like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, I was kind of thought it was repetitive and, you know, I got bored. And, and then of course the fans jump on, what are you talking about? It's the best game ever. But those are the comments that we listen to the most, you know, like we, we have to, we listen to all the comments uh, and certainly not every critical comment is, is something that we have to react to, but there was definitely a theme that was emerging. And um, I, I actually, would uh, have friends and uh, my peers, people who I was close to, who I could, uh, outside the office, who I could watch play. I had uh, several people in my gym uh, play and, and my son and stuff, and I would just watch how they, they interacted with it. And I, 
you know, you're kind of doing your detective work and you're able to put together uh, a case that, that there's actually a problem. There's, there's a hole mm. uh, in the boat and we're losing people. Um, so mostly it was because uh, there were a lot of exploits. Like you didn't have to do uh, the, the good stuff. Like there's kind of an optimal way to play any game. Uh, it's interesting that some people have, have found that kind of uh, frustrating, but that's, that's just a hundred percent true. Like the, of any game, mm. you know, like there's an optimal way to play GTA. Uh, you want to do heists and you want to get money and you want to, that's how you succeed in that game. And you want to avoid the cops that that's not, a, mm. that's not negotiable in that game, even for a game that is the ultimate version of do your own thing. So uh, same as for doom, the, the same would be said for any game uh, out there, destiny, our game, or, you know, a lot of what we do is we analyze uh, all games, not just video games, but, you know, sports and, and chess and different things. Just the, the concept of being engaged by an experience. What does that mean? And so there's an optimal way what we dub the fun zone of, uh, of Doom and identifying what that is specifically. Like, and the fun zone is if uh, a series of activities that if the player engages in these things like glory kills and reads codex entries and moves a lot and you know does does all the good stuff of doom 2016 then they'll have a really good time and they're switching weapons and stuff uh if they don't do that then they end up falling into a repetitive uh, pl uh pattern that gets uh boring you know to, to anyone uh for us it was uh too much ammo in the world and and too powerful a few combinations of things that led to if i just do this this and this like these two things i could pretty much beat the game uh it's not actually the most efficient way to play the game that in order to succeed in doom 2016 at a high level you do have to do uh, a variety of things you have to weapon switch you have to do all that stuff but you could in a really inefficient way but a less skillful way which means it's more achievable to uh not really skilled players you could beat that game playing in an awful way you know the kind of way that uh is not worthy of a nine or a ten metacritic score and it's certainly not um game of the year contender or anything that you would brag about so i think the polygon article uh video of them playing the game with the pistol and they got highly criticized for that i, I think that's one of the best pieces of footage for doom 2016 for us in terms of what we learned um because that was kind of like uh um uh uh, 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 that that solidified it that little example right there is a microcosm of what was happening quietly uh, out there uh, with our consumers and um, the, the the main thing is that they, they were able to do that I actually don't think it's their problem at all it's our problem you know um, the mm. game should be designed in such a way to not really encourage or allow people to succeed if they're playing that way and that's not saying that a criticism of them at all I actually would thank them because that's we learn the most from that because games do maternal any game it's you don't want it to be just for a select group of highly skilled players that's actually not what i'm saying at all like um i wanted that person whether they play a lot of fps or just a little we wanted to make sure that uh doom eternal would be for everyone that everyone would have the same type of experience that the people who gave it a 10 and a 9 in 2016 i wanted to get all those people who are like you know, not really into it, we, we made a decision to try to make sure that we would we would shore up the design of the game uh, so that way everyone would have relatively uh, a consistent experience. Now, at that point, if they still didn't like it, then, then that's fine, you know, but, but to have someone dislike your game because you had a, an unplanned for exploit, uh, that's, that's not really any studio's goal at that point. So it, that was really it. It was just identifying that... Um, you know, not not to be negative or anything, but Doom 2016 was great. We learned a ton of stuff. Uh, and we, you know, we'll do the same thing with Doom Eternal and uh, take a hard look at it, but then see where you could shore it up to make sure it's a more tightly designed experience. Uh, I mean, every artist, uh, creative team or, or individual is always looking at the work that they did before and growing from that. And, and it's mostly looking at the flaws, I think. That's... I, I, it's like sucking on a lemon. I'm, I can't stop doing. I like, I like doing it actually. <laughs> I like reading the negative press. I said, me and Marty share it all the time, and it, it's, uh, it, it's good because you're just growing. That's it. You know, you, you're discovering things, so it's really fun. And, and you know that every discovery is not to like, 
uh, it, it's uh, we're going to get better, you know. So so that's uh, that feels really good. So yeah, it, that was just part of it. There's there's lots of things, mm-hmm. uh, as, as Marty Marty said, you know, organizationally, lot a variety of things. But uh, certainly the at the core was uh, tightening up the overall uh, combat loop, the overall design of the game, so that way uh, there was a more consistent experience for everyone uh, mm. who played the game. And we're proud to say that, like, we see that. Doesn't mean that everybody loves the game, but um, we see that when I watch Twitch, doesn't matter how good they are or how experienced they are, everybody's doing relatively this, this having the same kind of experience. They're in that fun zone, and, and that's, that's really what we, we tried to make happen. Mm. Yeah, it's it's interesting with that that combat loop, you know, because you know, in my head, it's for whatever flaws it may have had in 2016 Doom, it's still an incredibly tuned thing. It's uh, the relationship between the weapons, the movement, and the AI. You'd already established this very tight kind of combat dance. I've heard you refer to it as you know chess, uh, uh, you know, a, a chess board of, with all these pieces. So that has to be an ecosystem that is very, very easy to spoil by adding new bits. You know, there's a reason chess they haven't added the Mega King, you know, since to, to, to the game. So, uh, you know, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, like, cause you've added so many new things without kind of it becoming chaos or losing that that central kind of uh, tightness of, of the combat. I mean, we did break the game uh, several times. Uh, the meat hook broke the game. Dash seriously broke the game. And when I say broke, I mean that engagement levels went down. It's not about being fun. It's about being engaging. That's that's like the, mm-hmm. I would say the biggest uh, area of development, uh, both for myself and for the team, was the obsession with the word engagement. You know, and and um, because fun is you start focusing on fun, and uh, fun is really good. I think last time we said fun, and that's really really good. But uh, fun is is when I perform an action in a game, whether it's shooting a gun in Warzone or using the meat hook in Doom, that it feels really good. That's fun. Um, engagement is that the use of that tool is, has me like really, uh, in that flow state where I'm just engrossed in, in the experience that's, and that's critical. It has to be both fun and engaging. Um, so. And engagement is more long term. Yeah, exactly. The, the meat hook is, is very, very fun on paper and, and, you know, in a box map that fucking amazing, you know, the, the team, everybody just did an amazing job. But what we did uh, was we saw when we put it in that uh, you you didn't need to do anything else. Nothing could touch you. You were way too fast. You were just too, you were, t- the race car got more powerful. So the racetrack then needed to, everything around the race car needed to get updated in order to keep up with the, uh, with the new race car. And so, yeah, we broke the game a lot uh, for sure in the first year. Uh, I, I want to, uh delve into a few sort of specific elements of of the kind of combat that kind of really jumped out at me um or i thought were quite interesting uh one of them was that uh the game returns to a lot of enemies from doom 2 you added the arachnotron the arch file who instantly drove me insane in this game um <laughs> so difficult <laughs> that guy uh way worse than the marauder but i'm going to get to him in a second uh and uh I'm, I'm quite interested by this decision to both pay homage to doom 2 and also like more generally the kind of that your process is uh by which an enemy makes it into the game you know do, do, how do you kind of how do you build a, a great doom eternal enemy I think if you identify the fun zone and you know the type of experience that you're trying to create, um, kind of the the core principles of the fun zone that you have defined, uh, that you know if the player does these these sets of things, and for Eternal it it became clear and clear, and you're always this is always evolving, you know, but uh, eventually I should say some at some point it does have to solidify. So it's weapon switching and and uh, using all the different weapons is one of them. Um, just that principle alone, uh, if we just focus on that, but there are many, there are like glory killing and chainsawing and burning for ammo and all those things. But let's just, just, just focus on that one. Um, if it, what, what's critical is I have, uh, take the super shotgun. The super shotgun was the most overused ga- uh, gun in Doom 2016. Uh, and in some cases it hurt the game because it was, uh, for, for those that weren't very skilled, we're looking for the easiest way to victory 
they would just lean on that weapon quite a bit. And then, uh, so how do you get the player to use different weapons? So it's not so much designing the AI as it is thinking about, this is the type of experience that I want the player to have. This is the fun zone. Uh, so the all of the things around the game, whether it's AI or environments or hazards or whatever, puzzles, they all have to uh, function, serve to uh, encourage the player to play that way. And by encourage, I mean if they they are they act as a series of bumpers around. So the fun zone is in the center. There is a series of bumpers around them, and those bumpers represent all the different elements of the game. Um, and they basically are frustration bumpers. They the player is a pinball, and if they hit those things, they need to die. They need to die fast. They they need to experience discomfort um, because frustration uh, is a part of engagement. And that was one of the biggest uh, places where we evolved, both as a, as a studio, as a game, is embracing frust player frustration. I like to say that word out loud because you pay some, someone pay $60 for your game and then you're going to say, I'm going to frustrate you. I think that's, that's a little scary of a bet. But if we don't do that and we don't hold you accountable, you will drift out of the fun zone as you did, as that Polygon player did in 2016. Mm. And you will use a pistol to beat a whole encounter. You know, you and guess what? You're not going to think that game is awesome. There's no way you think that game is good if you beat the whole level with the shotgun and a rocket launcher. That's terrible. And some people mm -hmm. will still say, yeah, but it's my choice. That's that's the bet we have to make. That's I, I we make the bet that that's not a great experience for everyone. Might be great for you. The beauty part about Eternal is that if you choose to play that way, you 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 could still lean on things. You just had to do a few a few more steps. But uh, so then, so you start there, and and when and as it relates to AI, uh, it's it's how do you uh, the most powerful gun? I'll start with the super shotgun. The most powerful gun in the game is the super shotgun. So and it's the most powerful at close range. So you take the mancubus and you say, how do I avoid this slow moving tank to uh, be getting point blank shotgun by this thing and dying with the power of the super mm -hmm. shotgun and the player just running around them endlessly super shotgunning them. Uh, kind of like they could in, in 2016. So you say, well, I'm going to give him a massive area of effect, uh, you know, ground blast. So that way, whenever the player comes close, and I'm going to tune it. So like as soon as the player comes within range, he, he, he fires it off. Regardless of how fast the animation looks, it doesn't matter. What's more important is to be effective. Um, so he now, So immediately the player knows. They see that guy. They say, I have a meat hook. I'm going to run up to him. And then he goes, gadoosh, and he pushes the player back. Then the next thing is if I try to line up a shot at a distance with him with like a rocket or like lock-ons or something, which you could still do, he has lethal cannons. Uh, we think of him, there are chess pieces, so we have to really, really define the role of that AI and what are they. And in the Mancubus' case, he is an Abrams tank. So when I am in the crosshairs of an Abrams tank, I should move. So one of, so weapon switching, so we've already solved that. Weapon switching is key to the fun zone. If I walk up to the Mancubus and try to use the double barrel shotgun, I can't. So automatically, I'm going to subconsciously switch to another weapon and quite literally switch to another weapon. So that's step one. That's one bumper. Now you're in the fun zone. You're switching weapons because you know that the, the super shotgun does not work against the Mancubus because he has an area of effect blast. The second thing would be um, now it, it's... Uh, I, I can't stand in his line of sight because his cannons have been tuned this game to be just insane. They're crazy. So I have to do what? I have to move. And the number one thing in the fun zone of Doom Eternal is movement. That's if you're moving, you're having fun. The player is, I said this last game, Bruce Lee on a skateboard with a shotgun. Uh, they're just skating around the arena and that that's when they're having fun. So he, already just because we made his cannons lethal fast projectiles, and we gave him a massive area of effect uh, blast. Uh, he is now having you weapon switch, and he's making you move. So good job, Mancubus. And then um, we, another part of the fun zone is weak points. We want you to think that's the key to engagement, even for an action game. When I'm not thinking, I'm not engaged. That's it. Like, if I just run down a hallway and endlessly slaughter guys with a variety of weapons, that's not fun because that'll be fun for like an hour. But um, I, you have to think. You have to be thinking. Now, eventually, in Doom Eternal, 
you you're sort of in a flow state where you're just reacting and doing things from muscle memory and it feels amazing it feels like you really acquired a skill um but in the beginning you're learning those things so um weak points is is one of the things we want you to do we don't want you to just shoot a mancubus you know like that's that's uh more and more i've I'm, I'm kind of been referring it to it on on the dlcs lately with the team of like the kill equation you know there is there is an enemy and what is the kill equation if the kill equation for that enemy is shotgun shotgun dead that's that's not worth sixty dollars you know that that's mm -hmm. that's garbage you know like but if it's weak point removal movement grenade ice bomb then close range shotgun you know that's that's a good then that equals dead mancubus that's a good kill equation that that has me thinking that has me using my tools now i'm really engaged I would say that the kill equation in Doom 2016 was very much super shotgun, super shotgun, dead demon. You know, uh, this mm. time it's, 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 uh, you know, it's ice bomb, weak point, you know, maybe ballista and then finish off with a shotgun. Um, mm. So his guns are so lethal that the player immediately says, these are awful. I have to get rid of these. And, um, and you can. Doom's, Doom teaches you very clearly that weak point removal is a thing. So it allows us, because you can disable that attack, we, we, again, it's another frustration bumper, like right up here, I'm describing frustration bumpers. Uh, one of them is how devastating the Arachnotron's gun turret is or how devastating the Mancubus's guns are. And uh, we would certainly see people uh, during development get slaughtered by those things, you know? Um, but that was the point, like you're giving them a tool. And what we know is that players Nobody, nobody's going to do something if you suggest it. People avoid pain more than they seek pleasure. And if you can combine those two things, just in life, if you could combine those two things in a game mechanic, you've, that now you've got them. So basically it's like, I really want to avoid the pain of dying to these lethal cannons. Great, shoot the weak points. Oh wow, that actually feels really good. Now that's where the fun mm -hmm. is. That's where the craftsmanship of the craftsman on the team is really on full display. Sound design, you know, gun design, destructible demons like there's just incredible effort put in by the team of incredible craftsmen to make that stuff feel fun because if that felt like shit we'd be encouraging you into doing something that doesn't feel good which is terrible and that's the loop i mean basically you design a character that encourages the player to to do the things you want them to do and then when they do those things they're really really well crafted and they feel amazing and so mm. that's basically how every ai is designed like you start with what it, what it is you want the player to do and then how this AI, this particular AI will encourage them to do that. Now, not everyone, I will say, does the same thing, obviously. Like the shield guys, for example, we know that the, the plasma rifle can be forgotten sometimes by players. But then we give them a, a lethal shield that you can't break, except if you use the plasma rifle and the fun comes in. Again, huge credit to the team. There's this fantastic AOE blast that you get that kills a bunch of guys and looks amazing and sounds amazing and feels amazing. Um, so each each chess piece will, you know, play a part in funneling you into the fun zone. And mm -hmm. and then the, the bet is for us that if you do those things, uh, you will have you will think Doom is good. <laughs> and where does um, I can obviously sort of see where he fits in with some of the frustration. Where does the Marauder specifically fit in with all this because, you know, he's really dominated the conversation since the game was released, I feel like there are a lot of people who really hate that guy. Is that like a desired effect? Are you pleased with how people yeah. respond to the Marauder? <laughs> you, you can't, the other thing is you can't make everybody happy. That That's kind of like, if you try to do t something, you get 10 people in a room. So GTA is one of the most successful games of all time. Like that GTA hmm. 5 sales are, what are they now? Like, I have no idea. Some, something is insane. Um, if I get 10 developers, do you think all of them are going to say it's their favorite game? There's no way. You know, there's mm. peop there are people who think from software games are the greatest and other people who don't. You pick the most popular games, the niche games. You know, I think Breath of the Wild is one of the best games ever. Uh, if I got 10 devs in the room or 10 people in general, they wouldn't, they would, not all of them would agree with me. So mm. I think what you hear with social media is just simply, and we love this, we listen, we don't, we care, uh, the vocal minority. I mean, it, it's, it's a, I, I can express my opinions real time. And what happens mm. is we, we call it the engagement graph. So uh, 
you begin the experience and it feels good. You get frustrated uh, by, like I said, the Mancubus's guns or his area of effect or his flamethrower. That's another way I didn't mention that he'll, you know, if you get too close to him, he'll burn you. So these things are frustrating. Um, and so if I have a Twitter account and I'm passionate about stuff, which I am, we all are, guess what I'm, I'm going to, dude, I've had, I've had nights with multiplayers that on the first night I've called and texted my friends and said, I don't think this is good at all. <laughs> and I'm talking about <laughs> multiplayers with uh, 50 million, you know, user bases that, that are amazing right. actually. Uh, you know, secret. I didn't think Warzone was great at first because I was frustrated and not good at it. Um, and now I, I fucking love Warzone. So the, the, uh, but, but real time, you get to hear my user feedback. You get to, and, mm. and we watch this very closely. So, uh, first night, oh my God, Marauder. So that is the, that is the dip in the, in the engagement graph. That's the dip. That's the low point. Mm. And that's a part of engagement. That's, Name an experience that you find engaging that you didn't find frustrating in the beginning or, or really at, at any point, chess being a great example, you know, because mm. uh, you're losing, you know, you're not succeeding and you're losing in a way that feels frustrating. Um, the game is there with tutorials and guides and to tell you what to do. And then people begin to climb that engagement graph. And eventually our goal is to get everybody up to the top, which is a, peer, a place of mastery. Uh, the, the fun zone and up there they're they're doing all the good things what we have to do is make sure that we shore up that experience so it's uncompromising so as many people as possible are pushed up that hill and and as they go up they're learning along the way there's little steps and they learn something and they get better and they learn something and they get better so what we find is that the initial experience with the marauder can be frustrating but then uh over time where it's not where you start it's where you settle with your art with your product you know uh, there's the first night initial feedback, but then there's the feedback after week two, three, four, five months out, six months out, and then you got to see where it is. Now, uh, I get fans, uh, on forums sending me messages all the time that say, don't you ever change that Marauder, you know, uh, <laughs> cause they're like, don't listen to anybody, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so he, he just, he is meant to hyper focus on the fun zone. He forces you to, he tests to see how fast you could do all of the things we've been asking you to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Prioritizing demons is one of the most important parts of the fun zone. So he, he immediately says, so he, just like the Mancubus's guns, I'm actually glad we started there because then it helps me break down the Marauder. The Mancubus's <laughs> guns tell you, take out my weak points, otherwise you'll die. And it's uncompromising. It's just like, okay, I'll do it, you know? So you do it. Hey, that felt really good. Um, that's like learning, uh, you know, another, kind of recent analogy is, is uh, that it's almost like we're teaching you how to play an instrument. And each mm -hmm. step of chainsawing, in rhythm, glory killing, taking out a weak point, that's like a note, you know, like you're learning how to play the guitar, right? Um, by the end of the game, you're basically Eddie Van Halen. You're, you're just doing things in sequence and you're, you're just, you're recording it. Oh my God, that was amazing. What the Marauder does is he forces you to see how fast you could do all those things while he's pressuring you. Uh, which basically means he tests you. He says, how good are you at weak point removal? How good are you at prioritizing demons? How fast can you clear this arena so you could fight me one-on-one? -on -one? That's, that's why we often spawn him at the end um, because he, he forces you. He is the grandmaster black belt and the meta there is get rid of everyone else so you could deal with him. Mm -hmm. And now if you were smart and you kept your super weapons, you could easily get rid of them with a BFG. Um, or you'll just have to take them out quickly yourself. And then when you fight him, what he teaches you, which is what you need for like nightmare level play and like really advanced play, but you could play him on any difficulty, is, uh, is basically aiming and shooting. You know, you, it, in Doom, it is a Twitch shooter. And he, he basically says to the player, how good is your aiming and shooting, you know, while you're moving mm. under pressure. Um, and if you, what, if you master him, you truly are, a, you, you own Doom Eternal now. Like he is the final mm -hmm. test. Uh, because for players who can master him and, and weapon switching is what he teaches you. Like we created a falter window with him where he actually can't respond to anything you do for about a couple seconds. It's not much. And what that, what that is supposed to do is encourage players to do the ultimate final skill in Doom Eternal is uh, uh, switching through your weapons, cycling through your weapons quickly. 
Um, and so people are able to combo at, you know, super shotgun, ballista, rocket, uh, whatever your combo is, both on a controller or on PC. Obviously on PC, you could do it faster. Mm -hmm. um, but on controller, you could do it pretty good. And uh, that's what he's meant to do. He's meant to teach you aiming and shooting and, and, and quick swapping, you know, quickly navigating through the weapon wheel or using the hot swap uh, tab on a controller if you want, or just, you know, using your keys on a mouse and keyboard. Uh, he teaches you that final lesson. And, uh, and it's a valuable lesson, especially uh, what ha for what happens at the end of the game. So he, he's, mm -hmm. a, he's a really, he's probably our most accomplished uh, chess piece, for sure. Very, very sophisticated character, uh, does, does a lot of things. I think he, he uh, in terms of engagement, I mean, he keeps you on your toes. Like you, you don't know what he's going to do, when he's going to do it. He's very like, you know, you're kind of stuck waiting for him to do his thing. So I think the there's great drama there and, uh, and a mm. lot of engagement because you think you are thinking a lot when you fight him. Um, he's mm. not just a, Hey, I'm really big. You know, the cyber, the cyber, uh, cyber demon, on the other hand, that's just a big old target. You know, that's meant to be just like, shoot me, you know, uh, which is great. <laughs> it's great that we have that. I mean, the Baron is kind of like that. The Baron is just like, I'm not, you know, I, pre he pressures you and he certainly encourages the use of the chain gun and the ice bomb, uh, because of his constant pressure. But, uh, he doesn't really have weak points or anything like that. So the, the cyber, the cyber demon is, uh, kind of the opposite. He's just a bullet sponge. Uh, mm -hmm. but that, that's good. Too. Not every, not every chess piece needs to be a black belt, like, like the Marauder. That's why there's only one Marauder. Um, mm -hmm. what do you think of the Marauder? Do you, do you, I, I really like the Marauder like actually. I, I like him because I think he almost introduces like a parry into Tomb Eternal and I love parries in games The the, the glimpse yeah, of yeah. the green. Like that's mm -hmm. that's very satisfying to me. Um, it's funny you mentioned from software there, and there's almost a hint of the kind of bloodborne gun parry in it there as well. They're, they're, I think uh, the uh, the the, I, the, what, I think... the cool thing about the I, I was just gonna say I think I think another like kind of you know when when you just a just a really smart thing that the team did with the design of the Marauder is you know as as Hugo mentioned he is kind of your your he's a black belt. He, he is the first time you face another black belt, uh, at a time where you feel like you need to test your black belt. And the fact that he was designed to, to, to not just be an, another demon. I don't know if that it would feel as when you encounter him the first time and he's introduced and he steps through the portal. Um, I don't think you would necessarily feel like it's that showdown with a, with, with that black belt. If he didn't kind of have that, that, uh, that, that similar, you know, those, those similar design elements as things you, you recognize in your suit. Um, and, and he, you know, he talks and like, he, he really does stand out outside of all of the game mechanic, uh, side of things. I think the fact that the team set it up as this real kind of classic showdown, you know, almost that Luke versus Darth kind of thing. Like you, you really, you really do feel like it's a test when it, when it, you know, when it happens in the game more so than just even a demon boss or, or something you're used to seeing. It, it really does feel like you're stepping against uh, a peer almost, and, and you know where you stand at that point in the game. And, and I think that that's kind of one of those subtle things that happens that, that really sets that, that fight apart as well. You know, nothing, nothing satisfying uh, doesn't come with a certain amount of engagement. The, I'm sorry, nothing, satis nothing in really engaging or satisfying to learn uh, is doesn't come with a certain amount of frustration. That is what the engagement graph describes. And, and um, that is exactly what he is. I mean, um, uh, to use jujitsu as an analogy, when I roll against a higher level belt, at first it's pretty frustrating because I, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, like they're, they're doing things that I, I don't know how to do yet. Um, but if I, if I stick with it and I learn then, and if I'm able to overcome that, then it's incredibly satisfying. So what I find is that our, uh, you know, the goal was to, uh, we knew that people would be frustrated at first. I think if you design an experience where you're constantly never trying to frustrate them, you're, it's not gonna be good. Um, the, when I get arrested by the cops in GTA and I lose all my stuff and I have to start over at the, at the precinct, that's, that's not good, you know, like, and then what that does is that pushes me into doing more heists to get more of my layer set up and my hideouts and my different 
stashes across the city and a better car and better guns. Like the simple mechanic of getting arrested, which is frustrating in that game, pushes me into all of their systems and everything they want mm -hmm. you to do. And it's satisfying. Like that's, that's the key. Um, once I, it's satisfying to do those things. It's satisfying to get, uh, what do they call it? That's not a, not a layer. They call it a, not a hideout, um, whatever. But the, the, uh, so the, the, the initial experience with the Marauder, you know, while it's, fr it's, he's a, he's the, he's the engagement graph in one character that there's the beginning part where you're, fr you're learning and frustrated, but for those that learn to, to beat him, uh, consistently and master him to the point that we've seen the videos now where people could beat him in, seconds that mm. they own that and 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 that that is a that is a level of mastery that is to be uh, often celebrated by players that that's what we see is that the victory over him is so much more satisfying because he really really taught you something and all of the things mm. that he taught you are are the fun zone it is just uh done at like lightning speed with him throwing axes at you you know like um, so it's, it's a real, and that's, we see that we see, we certainly see the social commentary uh, on, on social with people who never mastered him or just started and they're frustrated, but we see a lot, especially now of people posting videos of themselves conquering him, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and th that's like the people at the top of the engagement graph, uh, you know, calling out to everyone else saying like, look at this, you know, I, I did it. I it is very much like climbing Mount Everest uh, again. You just want to make sure that everybody can get up that mountain. I mean, you have to, do, our goal is not to make some niche game that is only for hyper-skilled players. Like actually not at all, but that doesn't mean that frustration still isn't a part of that experience or learning things or learning skills. You know, Doom is an action game, a combat puzzle worth your time to solve. We just want to make sure that if we hold your hand up that mountain or you take an elevator up that mountain, when you get up to the top, it's gonna to be like, yeah, this is great. If you feel like you earn that, that sweet spot of like, you know, just enough challenge, but I'm continuing to make progress, what is often described as the components of the flow state and stuff, then when you get up there, you're gonna be really, really stoked. You're gonna you're gonna feel really good. And that that's our goal. We ride that, I, I don't know if you felt that, but you're riding that razor's edge, you're always, you know, it's challenging, but you feel so satisfied when you overcome the challenge, whether it's an arena or, or the Marauder or the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with that in mind, then, uh, the sort of the engagement outside of the kind of combat loop, because obviously Doom Eternal does a lot more that, than Doom 2016 did in terms of there are now substantial platforming puzzles. There's a lot more to the exploration. There's even a kind of cinematic angle in terms of, sort of storytelling in some of the levels. How do you kind of push into that without, you know, when you've got this sort of core of such intensity, how do you kind of push into that without it feeling like a, a different game? Did he say the platforming stuff? I, he cut out there. Yeah, yeah, that's I think, yes. yeah, I, yeah. You, you, Hugo, you can go into the detail, but I think I, I heard the, the the rest of the question. I think I think you know the 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 way that you know you say how how do how do you go into that without it feeling like a different game? And and I think the the, the big thing for for the team, the kind of guiding principle was uh, aggression. Um, everything you know, everything that the game does and you do within the game is is very aggressive um and and very you know uh you're 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 always you're always taking the shortest path to 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 solve the problem so you know whether it's the monkey bars or the um you know the 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 wall climbing um you know the the way that feedback happens as well you know we talk about feedback and killing demons um the feedback of climbing a wall or 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 monkey bars or you know, pretty much anything, any of the traversal stuff that that, um, that that does have you solving, you know, kind of solving the level puzzle as much as the combat puzzle um, is all handled with aggression. Even the story, I mean, the way that, uh, you know, the way that Hugo and team uh, built the story, um, like you like you said at the beginning, shooting a hole in Mars, uh, that's a story beat, but but that certainly aligns with, uh, you know, with the, the character and, and tone of the game and, and uh, uh, and I and I think it just is as long as that stuff is all consistent, um, you know. Again, it, it comes back to engagement. So you're engaging, you're thinking, uh, and and getting a, a level of variety that that Doom 2016 really didn't didn't have. You know, talking about going back to the the analysis of 2016 and and being able to solve it all with a super shotgun. 
you know, really by the time you got about three quarters of the way through the game, you know, the, the combat was pretty relentless and, and, and continuous. You kind of went arena, hallway, arena, hallway, and, and there was, there was not much else um, other than a little bit of secret finding. So, um, you know, being able to have the player think through the level, uh, solve the level like they're solving the combat, um, you know, have some of that traversal stuff, have the, the story there. It, it, it keeps you engaged. It keeps you thinking, um, wondering what's going on, what's next. Um, and it does it in a, in a very aggressive um, way that, that never, it never abandons what the core of the game is all about or, or the core of, of what the Slayer is all about. Um, and, uh, and just, I think that consistency is what was, what makes it work no matter, <clears throat> no matter what we do. Mm. Engagement I, being, uh, as Marty said, the most important thing, you know, uh, engage the player the whole time. I think even, even when you're not shooting demons, even the way the story is told, uh, you have to pick up the codex pages and complete the story. And then also when you're done, it's still, it has a lot of gaps and it's written in kind of a cryptic way. So you have to fill in the gaps and piece things together. So uh, we see that we want every component of the game to be engaging. That's like the word that we're obsessed with. So uh, as Marty said, to uh, how do we make the le the levels more engaging? Well, we have to give the player tools that make traverse, like the, the level should pose uh, a, a puzzle. Solving the level should be a puzzle that's just as engaging as the combat puzzle. So we gave them a bunch of tools uh, that allow us to design the levels in a way that make them by themselves uh, very engaging. So uh, hopefully you feel that, you feel that Doom, uh, you know, if it works for you, uh, is, is an engaging experience throughout from beginning to end. Uh, and it, and it, can t it has levels of engagement too, because the story is not tier one engagement at all. You know, like that's, the cutscenes are skippable and they're fast. And, and on the surface, if you just watch the cutscenes, you're just gonna see the Doom guy do a bunch of cool stuff. To, you're gonna go to cool places and kill cool things and he's gonna do cool stuff. But if you care and you start digging into the codex, you see that there's like, uh, there's a lot of uh, pieces to fit together. And, and we've seen fans uh, dig into that quite a bit. I get all kinds of uh, fans sending me theories that are, I will say this, uh, shockingly correct. Usually when people uh, <laughs> guess and, and say, this is what I think is happening. I don't ever tell them this, but but I will say that uh, I don't give them specifics, but it is uh, it is cool to see and, and people are definitely putting it together. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's just, I, there's, there's so much about this game I would I would love to talk to you guys about, but unfortunately we are um, running out of running out of time. Um, I guess uh, to sort of to round this out, you know, this is a game that's so stuffed with ideas. Um, you know, I love Doom 2016, but this I thought was just a huge step up in in every regard. I'm just kind of interested, you know, for both of you, which which you know, is there a specific part, be it an enemy, a level, a story, be it anything? that you know really registered with you as something you're particularly proud of you can go first Brian. Uh, it's it, i i don't know i don't know if there's this a particular thing I, I i think it really just for me it comes down to the 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 total package i, I mean like i i just you know you get to the, you get to the end of the game and you're playing it a lot and we were playing it a lot and this time there's there was no getting tired of of playing it like you're you're constantly mm. figuring something new out or or finding a new combination you know like the the kill equation that hugo talks about you're 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 constantly looking for the kill equation that that works the best or or that is the most fun you know but but still within the confines of the fun zone um i it just just the the total package i mean like literally when you th when i think about playing the game and and how much fun it is um the you know the challenge of it the 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 feel of mastering it i i think that's maybe it is that it had a mastery you know hugo talked about the the engagement graph and getting to the top of the mountain uh, of that graph i i think the feeling of mastery is is probably it, it's just it's so much more rewarding than I, I i feel like i've i've felt with with almost any other game um that it, I, I think that combination of things, and it, and it really just does speak to everything: uh, the design, the story, you know, the way you feel as the as the character, uh, the feedback that you're given throughout the game with the, the, the art, you know, we the never, destructible demon, the gore, the art. I know. I mean, the 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 visuals in the game, like it just it it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same if all of the pieces weren't working together. So 
I think that's probably, it, it's maybe a cop-out answer, but I think the alignment <laughs> no, of everything, the, the alignment of everything in, uh, you know, in a, in a single form and, and, and the cohesion of it all, um, I think is something so much better in Doom Eternal than it was in 2016. Um, and, uh, and, and it just, it, it just shines through in the entire experience. I, I think that's, that's and, for me, that's the best. And it takes a great team to do that, Marty. Make Segway a great game. It awesome. does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, Thanks. it is. It really, it really fun. does. Yeah. Can't say it enough about the team. I mean, it is such what? talented. Yeah. Thank you. I, I it, totally I, agree I with that. A, that, that. No, that, that, go uh, ahead, that, Hugo. What go Marty ahead. said it, it, uh, it does. It, that's, that takes a great team, like a team working well. A great team is a group of really talented individuals working well together towards a, a singular goal. And it's not easy to do that. Um, but that's, you know, we, we have that, you know, and uh, at id, and we're very proud of it. Uh, and, and, and it's exciting uh, for, for whatever we do. I think we're very efficient as a group and, uh, you know, uh, across the organization, so it's it's uh, it's really really exciting uh, to see. I I think uh, in addition to that, uh, what Marty said, and certainly the overall the co how consistent it is and cohesive again is is uh, probably the thing we're most proud of because I think it you know a layer beyond that is like it's really saying how great of a team uh, it makes going to work every day feel really good. Um, the the um, uh, I like the resource management. I like the the uh the there's a flow of like i'm losing resources as i you know my goal is to kill them all as i do that i expend resources whether it's my health from taking damage or my guns or my my ammo but then while i do that i can burn them and glory kill them so there, there's like this loop that happens of like expending resources but then killing them in a variety of ways to get it back there's there's a moment where there's this childlike juvenile discovery that you make it's like giving a kid a, a, a book of matches and a firecracker and like a gi joe toy and they're like i have an idea i could i think if i could you know every kid has done that they're like i'm gonna take my gi you know, my army men and i'm gonna do something to them you know? uh you, you okay you're like i have a blow, I have a blow torch that gives them armor and if i freeze them they'll give me health if i've upgraded it and if i chainsaw them i'll get tons of ammo and if i do all those things to, i wonder if i do all those things together I, oh my god i could get everything at once like it, it feels so good to be like fighting an arachnotron and strafing around him and he's burning and giving me armor but i'm losing health it's like sorry it, guys it's really really <laughs> a great loop Sorry, guys, to, to interrupt this uh, amazing conversation. We could be talking for, for hours. Sorry, Hugo. Uh, I totally agree oh, with okay. you. You should, you should be so proud of the team. Uh, it's a masterpiece, as I said at the beginning. Uh, I, I don't know how did I get time to do this game lab uh, uh, instead of keeping on playing to, the, to, to your game. But right after I finish, I will go back to play it, OK? <laughs> it's, thank you so much, uh, the three of you. Thank you, Matt, for, for bringing you know, together of this amazing conversation, Hugo and Marty. Hopefully, we'll see you uh, soon, some, somewhere in the world, uh, hopefully here in Barcelona. And once again, thank great. you for a great, great game. Definitely one of the best games in this year and probably the best Doom ever. Congratulations to the team. Thank, thank you, you very Thanks much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Take care. All right. See you later. <laughs>